tonight on Connecticut's news station. After a year filled with deadly crashes, one town is turning to speed cameras to keep roads safe. When you can expect to see them go off and exactly how they will work. And the cold continues, but not for long. Your full forecast coming up. An emotional vigil in Hartford tonight for a visiting nurse found murdered. But there are calls for changes in the system to protect nurses just like her. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. We begin tonight in West Hartford, where officials are hoping to hit the brakes on speeding drivers with the help of cameras. Thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 10. I'm Brent Hart. I'm Sarah Sanchez. The city announced a pilot program this week that will set up speed cameras at different intersections across town. Now, last year proved one of the deadliest on West Hartford roads. Six people were killed, three of them pedestrians. Fox 61's Jake Garcia joins us live in West Hartford now with details on when those cameras could start going up. Jake. Well, Brent and Sarah, it's all part of West Hartford's vision to have zero road deaths by 2033. And thanks to a more than half million dollar federal grant, cameras could soon be enforcing speed limits across the town. People drive too fast. The cops can't pull everybody over, so they gotta, they gotta slow people down. If you tend to drive with the lead foot, you could soon be ticketed by speed cameras in West Hartford. A federal grant aimed to help improve road safety in West Hartford plans to implement 15 speed cameras at the most dangerous intersections and roads, which is getting mixed reaction. People are speeding, you gotta give them a ticket. And if you gotta do it with a camera instead of a cop, you do it that way. If you're gonna go that route, you might as well have more police officers on the road, quite frankly. Um, and, and going the road that way rather than just trying to tag people with a speeding camera. Some speed cameras are already in use across the state. This year, the legislature allowed the Connecticut Department of Transportation to use three speed cameras in various work zones to help enforce work zone speed limits for drivers going 15 miles an hour over the posted speed limit. About 20% of all vehicles are speeding through work zones, which is just incredibly dangerous which the Department of Transportation believes is making a difference. Hearing from the men and women who are working on Connecticut roadways, they said it feels different. They're feeling safer on the roadways, which is great news. The program would be temporary at first, starting sometime next year and lasting 18 months. The grant would also include funding for an officer to review the video to make sure drivers were going 10 miles per hour over the speed limit before issuing a ticket. If you were to get a ticket, it could cost you 50 bucks the first time and up to $75 for additional fines. With no official date in hand, West Hartford will receive guidance from both the state and federal departments of transportation. Just like our work zone safety camera program, this program is designed to improve safety, to change driver behavior, really not there to uh, generate any significant revenue for the municipalities. And last year was the deadliest year for pedestrians and cyclists in Connecticut. Senator Richard Blumenthal says that's a trend that needs to be reversed. Now, West Hartford is just one of six Connecticut cities and towns to receive federal funding to help improve road safety. Live in West Hartford, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Jake, thank you. We're going to turn to the weather now. Another cold one in store tomorrow, but Thursday looking slightly better. But Thursday, there's always Thursday. Here's <laughs> yeah. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank with more. Hi, Rachel. Yeah, we have one more cold day to get through, and then temperatures will rebound in a big way. Not only was it cold and windy today, but there were even some snow showers and flurries across the state. This is from Justin Zapari in Rocky Hill. This is what we call mood snow, right? Just enough to kind of get you in the mood for the holiday season, but not enough to cause issues out on the roads. And this is actually lake effect snow. So it has traveled a very, very long journey from Lake Ontario, where it is snowing like crazy in areas like Syracuse. And we were just getting a little taste of that outside today. As the winds slowly diminish, and I mean slowly, because it is still windy out there, we're gonna start to see that snow band begin to recede and that won't be an issue for us tomorrow. Right now we're looking at temperatures in the upper 20s to lower 
increase. And as we head through the overnight hours, we're looking at temperatures dropping back into the 20s statewide. Now, even though temperatures will still be cold tomorrow with highs climbing into the mid to upper 30s, it's not as windy as it was outside today. So the wind chill is not as low. Still think there's a bit of a breeze, but again, not quite as powerful as it was today. And once we get through this, temperatures will start to climb. We do have some rain to time out, though, for the end of the week and also possibly over the weekend. We'll take a look. Your full forecast coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. Well, a man who went on a wild carjacking crime spree on I-95 in New Haven two years ago will spend the next eight years behind bars. 52-year-old Frank Montez Rivera was sentenced this afternoon. Back in October of 2021, Montez Rivera first stole a car from a man pumping gas. He then eventually ditched that car in favor of a tractor trailer, subsequently crashing that semi on the highway and hitting 10 other cars in the process. No one sustained serious injuries, but people who were on the road that day are celebrating justice being served. We have compassion and forgiveness, okay, and, uh, and that was the New Haven way. And, um, you know, I thought the sentence was appropriate. He obviously has some needs, but there also has to be consequences. Johnson joined a state trooper after the crash and dragged Montez Rivera out of the cab of the tractor trailer. The trooper was then able to take him into custody. A woman is fighting for her life in New Haven. She was shot last night. Officials say she's in critical condition. The shooting happened around 930 last night at a home on Blake Street. Police say the victim was just 21 years old. She was found with gunshot wounds to her stomach and back. Police believe the suspect was barricaded inside the home, but when officers cleared the house, they never found their suspect. Police are asking anyone with information to come forward. Well, tonight, nurses across Connecticut are remembering a visiting nurse killed in late October in Willimantic. A vigil was held for Joyce Grayson at the state capitol. One month after her death, there are still more questions than answers about what happened. Fox 61's DeAndrea Turner was at that emotional vigil tonight. She joins us in studio with that story. DeAndrea. Well, the vigil was put on by the Connecticut Association for Healthcare at Home. Now dozens of nurses and other community members from across the state came out to pay their respects. Joyce was an angel on earth. She really was a very unusual person. And I know people say this about people, but in this case, it is so true. Joyce Grayson was a wife, mother, foster mom to 35 children, a friend and a nurse who those who have grown to know her story say died doing what she was called to do, help people. She never should have gone. She, she left this earth when she was doing the work she should have been doing, and we need to protect that. According to police, Grayson was found dead October 29th at a halfway house for sex offenders in Willimantic. She had an appointment to see a patient at the address and then missed several appointments scheduled later that day. On Tuesday, those grieving the loss of Grayson and coping with the dangers of the job of visiting nurses came together to honor her life. I know the feeling. And that door clicks behind you and you're looking at somebody that could be dangerous to you. And I'm here, I'm here to pay tribute to Joyce, number one, but I'm here also hoping that something happens so that this never happens again. Many people spoke during the vigil, including Joyce's pastor and multiple legislators about visiting nurses' safety and the changes that need to be made. It is not fair. Um, that we are not protecting you the way you should be protected. And I am so sorry we were unable to protect Joyce. And many people also wear white ribbons at this vigil today. It's a universal symbol of faith and hope, and white also represents healthcare workers providing frontline essential services. In the studio, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. DeAndrea, thank you. A new attempt tonight to today marked 25 years since the death of Rita Hester. She was an African-American transgender woman whose unsolved murder sparked the start of the annual Transgender Day of Remembrance, which we observed last week. Hester's life and legacy were celebrated in Hartford tonight, the city where she spent most of her life. The event was called Pretty in Pastel Colors and included an illuminated art exhibit, potluck dinner, and music. Organizers say they wanted attendees to remember Hester for who she was, not just how she died. It's a celebration of life. 
I want people to look at art. I want people to know the lives of the girls that have been lost, but not just the way that they died, but also about who they were, what were their aspirations, what were their desires. Hester's murder remains unsolved to this day. She was killed in Alston, Massachusetts back in 1998. Police are still investigating in an effort to bring her killer to justice.